his eye. Hey everyone, glad to see you back. Glad to see you looking fresh. Star Wars Visions dropped on Disney Plus not too long ago and has brought us a slew of new Star Wars journeys and adventures to go on in the galaxy far, far away. Now, there are nine different adventures here, all non-canonically animated featurettes, featurettes, features, whatever you want to call them, shorts, episodes, whatever, or an anthology show of different stories around the whole galaxy. This is something that feels right with Star Wars. It feels very different with Star Wars. I like that this is a new look into what could be out there in the universe, and it is a lot of fun to see so many different stories of characters that we may never see again, but hopefully will see again, but also just the idea of there are so many other stories to tell in this galaxy that wouldn't be able to get told without something like this. I'm going to go through each and every episode from my least favorite to my favorite, ranking them, talking about why I think it's the worst or why I think it's the best, getting right into things. Starting off at number nine, we have Akakiri, which is the closure of the anthology. Now, some people may love this episode. I don't know if it was me just being tired from watching the entire show in one go. It was just something about the style, something about the feeling. I wasn't a huge fan of how this episode played out. I felt it a little too draggy, and I didn't get any attached to any of the characters as much as I had in other episodes. And I feel like Akakiri would have served better in a earlier slot, and something else could have closed the series a little better. Now, you may disagree with me there. Something had to be number nine. Obviously, when you're ranking nine things, something has to be the worst. That is not to say that this is a bad episode. None of these episodes are bad. I felt this one was the weakest, in my opinion. A little too draggy, a little too much melancholy for the, for the ending. Guess it just wasn't for me. Moving right along to number eight, we have T.O.B.1, or Toby. This is a very cartoony look, much different from the last one we just talked about. This one arcans back to Astro Boy, is the one I thought of immediately when watching this. It is very cute, it is a very light-hearted episode while dealing with some dark themes at times, but also some very light-hearted ideas of hope. This episode is not very long, none of these are very long. This episode does a lot with introducing Toby as a fully-fleshed character, and yeah, I think it's I think it's good. I think it's one of the weaker ones. I think again, it, it's a little slow. If it tries to put too much into the story, because there's themes of of growth and hope, and we need to work on this one thing, and then ideas of destiny also thrown in there. But there is, like I said, there's a lot to enjoy about this episode. We're up to number seven. Tatooine Rhapsody is an episode which is the only episode I believe to have characters that were also in like the movies and shows and stuff because we get to see Boba Fett, we get to see Zabba the Hutt, and we obviously get to see Tatooine. And this episode was it was good. I liked it better than the other two because it's a fresh idea. Music in Star Wars, uh, we've seen it. Like Jabba is a great way to introduce us into the idea of more music in the Star Wars universe. Because, you know, there's his band, there's people performing at his palace and all that. And having a band of a ragtag group of people. You know, you got a three-headed drummer, you have a droid guitarist, you got a hut on bass, and you got a Padawan as the singer. And it's just a nice, enjoyable romp with a pretty decent song at the end. If you listen to it in the Japanese version, if you listen to it in America, the mixing and the singer did a not a great job, but it's still enjoyable, even still. Moving up over to number six, Lop and Ocho is one of the most, I can see this being its own show kind of episode to this whole thing. There are a lot of things introduced, and it is set in the setting of when the Empire first is introduced to a new world. Like, what do people experience? What do people feel? Like, the push and pull of, well, they're here to help us, but no, they're not here to help us. They're here to take over. But if if they weren't here, we'd be poor. But if they weren't here, we'd be free kind of conversation in this episode. Uh, I really liked the characters in this one a lot. I really enjoy the, the fight scenes in this a lot. The fight scenes are great through most of it. As we get more up towards the top, the fights 
start getting more and more incredible. I think that lop and outro to the top is where I start to consider these all to be like very good great episodes like standalone or could be part of a bigger whole kind of story episodes but yes La Pinocho is a great episode it does the idea of family very well moving on up to number five is the ninth Jedi which like the last one could very much be a whole thing because this ends on a cliffhanger kind of I don't want to spoil it there's a, a big story here that goes on for I think over 20 minutes and so it feels like a full episode of a show it introduces a lot of characters and a lot of new ideas to the galaxy and it introduces a lot of interesting concepts and something even like oh this lightsaber works in a new way that we haven't seen before like again i don't want to spoil what's going on i just want to say that the ninth jedi is straight out great and if they would make La Pinocho or The Ninth Jedi their own show, that would be fantastic. Those two are the ones that laid the groundwork the best. I think that's why I have them kind of in the middle here. They feel like they're setting something else up where that might not happen, as opposed to just being their own contained short with a beginning, middle, end. We go to number four, which is The Duel, it is the first episode, and I adore the aesthetic look of the black and white splash of color kind of look something like the sin city movies and so an entire episode of that is so good and of course with my luck there has to be some caveats because i am not a huge fan of cg anime the yin and yang you can't have something so good without something pulling it down even still this episode does a phenomenal job of opening the show it is just style and beauty, and there are some great twists and turns. A traveling, wandering samurai, right? Which makes so much sense in the Star Wars universe. It has a, you know, R2-D2 straw hat as a companion. That's fantastic. Everything about the ideas of this episode are fantastic. I feel like if this was hand-drawn, and I'm being extremely picky here, this very well could have been the best episode of the bunch. Moving on up to number three, we have the twins. In a very pro mare art style. Very bright and colorful. and So sweet. It'll rot your teeth kind of style. This episode is balls to the wall action from start to end. And it is just so cool. It's probably one of those episodes that you have to watch multiple times to really get everything that's going on. Because so many things are thrown at you left, right, and center. And it introduces... Some very cool characters that are children that are twins, clearly, based on the, the name, that are bred to have the dark side run through them. And this is amplified with their twin Star Destroyer ship, which is at the beginning of the episode. And from there, it just gets bigger and bigger, and the fight is insane. Just go watch this episode. This episode is a really good like introduction to like the craziness that what a full Star Wars anime could be. And... This one does have a nice ending, and it doesn't really need to go on from here. If there was more, then oh boy, would it be something special. Moving up to number two is The Elder. Now, I felt this episode, while it doesn't have a lot of background characters and a lot of story structure, it is a very straightforward story of uh, a Jedi Master and his apprentice. They go to this planet, and they hear of a Sith, The Elder, who is a bad guy, and they need to go take him down. All right, this episode focuses so much on the action and the atmosphere that it doesn't really focus on the story as much, but that action and that atmosphere is so good. It is the only action scene in this show that I audibly, like, gasped. For good reason. The Elder is fantastic. In a show, in an anthology that has so many sword fights, this is probably my favorite sword fight of it. And for that reason, it is ranked at number two for me. And closing off our list, we have my favorite episode, which is The Village Bride. Now, The Village Bride, I don't think is the longest episode. It feels like the longest in the best way possible. And that it introduces a whole new world, and it introduces some great characters, and it introduces some interesting concepts of the Force as a religion that we don't 
get to see as much in other Star Wars media. We get to see the Force used as a tool a lot, but we don't really get to see it just existing with nature. And we don't get to see civilizations work with nature and the Force in a collective whole. 